the technology the human race have created will be the reason for their destruction. So Bill Gates, don't worry about reducing the world's population because you will be reduced to rebel by the very technology you have created. World War III will take place. Nuclear weapon will be used. Now, when nuclear war starts, don't worry about lockdowns. <laughs> and please don't worry about no viruses, don't worry about no climate change. Those nuclear warheads will take care of any climate change. The temperature will be so hot, even if you're in Antarctica, you will be going out with a singlet. Instead of minus 53, minus 60 degrees, it will be plus 160 degrees. You will be boiled, no problem. So is this what man, man is proud of? We've created the nuclear weapon. Wow. Look at us. We can fly a plane 5,000 miles away with, by, with, by remote control. Look at us. We've put how many satellites in orbit? Look at us. We are building a station on the moon and in, in space. Look at us. You are ignorant. You've lost your wisdom the moment you uh, uh, denied Jesus Christ. You've lost your wisdom. Any one of us without the Lord, we are ignorant. We become a stumbling stone. And to the Jews, the stumbling stone was their very religion. A religious person ends up being judgmental. Don't ever be religious. You are not a religious person. You are a Christian. You are living Christ. You are not doing certain duties to please Christ. You need to live Him. There is no obligations and duties in Christianity. When we talk to people of different faiths, we say, listen, Christianity is not a religion in the sense of a religion. Why? Because the moment you invoke the name religion or the word religion, automatically you are invoking a set of rules, guidelines, regulations, and laws. You go to all the religions of the world with all love and respect to them. You go to all of them and they will say to you, if you want to end up in a good place, you must do this and you must do this and you must do this. It's all about doing, 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 doing in order to end up being in a good place. You come to Christianity, you read in the Gospel of John 15, 5, the Lord Jesus says it very clearly and simply. Without me, you cannot do anything. You cannot do anything. Look at the Lord, totally different to any religion out there. Totally different. Why? Because Christianity is based on love. I don't have the time. I have to leave you with it. Christianity is based on love. And since it's based on love, law has no love in it. Because law does not show any sign of love. You break the law, the law will break you. But when it comes to love, you break me. Because you've done something wrong, I go and punish myself because the last thing I want to do is to punish you. Why? Because I love you, even though you hurt me. But I'll accept this hurt and pain as long as you are safe and sound because I love you. And we see this very vividly clear in parenthood. Parents suffer at the hands of their children, but they still continue being parents. And they still continue suffering for their pet children. And they still continue sacrificing for their children. Why? Because the love is genuine. Children go against them. Parents don't. Children hurt them. Parents don't. Children walk away. Parents don't. Because there is true love. Christianity is based on love. 
And since it's love, it cannot have laws, rules, and guidelines, and regulations. Because love does not exist in a set of words. Love exists between two parties. Love only exists between another person, person and another one. That's why God became man. For the love to be existent between God who became man and us human beings. You don't love law. <laughs> when you go to court, you're going to say to judge, Oh, I love your law, judge. Man, I can't wait for your law to break me and send me to hanging by, you know, death by hanging or with a lethal injection. Would you love that kind of a law? Of course not. But when you meet your gazelle, when you meet Rachel and Elizabeth, and when you meet Jono, you fall in love. Because you only fall in love with another human, not with a set of laws. That's why Christianity is not a religion. It's a belief in someone called Jesus Christ. This Jesus Christ is a person. And what do you do with this person? You fall in love with him. And when you fall in love with this person, when it comes to love, then there is nothing in Christianity that says you must do this. There is not. If anybody tells you, they are lying to you. You don't have to pray. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to fast. You don't have to do anything good. But, if I ask you this, do you love Jesus? If you say yes, then if you love Jesus, then you must come to church. And if you love Jesus, then you must pray. And if you love Jesus, then you must you know, fast. And if you love Jesus, then you must help those who are in need. Because it is coming to church, praying, singing to the Lord, and doing charitable deeds is a result of that love. It's not a duty. It is a natural instinct. Because when you love the person, you don't think twice about calling them to hear their voice. You love them, you miss them, you hear their voice naturally. So, you go to church naturally. You pray naturally. You read the Bible naturally. You do fasting naturally. It's not a duty. It's a life. Love must be lived. This is Christ. And this is the cross. Jesus loves you. Oh, he loves you. You know how I said about Satan is so ugly? On the other hand, Jesus is stunning, beautiful. He is breathtaking. You see him, you lose yourself. You melt. You become speechless. You become dumbfounded, blown away, blasted to smithereens. You just want to dissolve in him. You just want to be embraced by him. You just want to hug him, kiss him. When you see him, you'll say, I've missed you, Lord. It's been a long time. This is home. Heaven is my home. When I went there, I realized that was home, not here. It's a feeling no language can express. No language. Jesus is real. Why oh, stunning? Why oh, stunning? Love the Lord.